Hey, what's up, Jordan here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to clean up the metal guitar tone in your mix, specifically how to get rid of the low end mud that's not adding anything, control the high end fizz, and then notch out the harsh frequencies in between. So let's jump into it. Okay, let's check out these guitar tracks in solo. By the way, this is a band called Mandroid Echo Star. So the first plugin in the chain when it comes to heavy distorted guitars like this for me is 99% of the time an EQ like this. I'm using the Waves R EQ. You can use anything similar that allows you to do filters and allows you to do narrow boosts or cuts like this. I'm gonna AB this first so you can hear the difference that this plugin is making. Hear how it's just really focusing and cleaning up the guitar tone. I'm gonna to show you exactly all the steps that go into this one by one. So let's turn these off. By the way, the left and right guitars here, it's the same tone and I've got these plugins linked so that whatever I do on one, it's gonna do on the other as well, as you can see here. So we're just gonna be, it's gonna look like I'm only processing one side here, but in fact I am processing both. All right, so let's dive into it. I always start by putting a high pass filter on, which is cleaning up the low end. So I ended up with that 135 here. Let's go back to how I would normally start a mix. So I'll bring it all the way down, turn it on and play back. And I'm gonna sweep it up to the point where I feel like I'm losing too much of the low end and then back it off just a little bit. So somewhere around 130 is working for me in this mix. There's no set rule. Like I guess as a general rule of thumb, you could start about 100 hertz. It's usually somewhere around there, maybe from 80 to on the high end, 130, 150. So this is where we end up here. So now listen on the AB again, just to the sub frequencies, just the low end rumble. That's actually not adding anything to the tone that contributes to the song. It's just eating up space in the low end that we should leave for the bass instead. Okay, so that's step one. Now step two, we're gonna do the same thing on the other end of the frequency range. We're going to filter out some of the high end. So same kind of idea here. We're gonna start with a low pass filter right up near the top and then sweep it back until we feel like we're losing too much of the high end energy and then stop right around there. It's almost getting a little too dark there. Let's back it off right about there. Sometimes you can notice this more on kind of chord strumming parts. You don't want to go too far on this because you can kind of, that's where a lot of the energy for the guitars lives up there. So don't, you know, cut way too far down to like the five, six K range. You know, usually somewhere around the nine to 12 K range is where I end up having a filter here. We're even a bit lower than that around the eight K range in this particular mix. So even with just the filters here, listen to how much cleaner this tone sounds. Depending on what speakers you're listening on, that's gonna be more or less obvious to you. So that's already a big improvement. The tone is way more focused for us. There's two more things I'm gonna do here though, and it's gonna be two narrow cuts in the high mid frequencies. So as we're listening to the tone, there's a couple areas between like 3K to 6, 7K that are just nasty. They're just poking out too much. So what we're gonna do is try to sweep, find those frequencies and then dip them out. So let's start. Basically, you're just gonna wanna grab a narrow band of your EQ, 
boost it up. Again, make sure you're using a pretty narrow width here. Start sweeping around. Until you find the range where it's really jumping out and that frequency that was bothering you just listening to the normal tone is really jumping out of the speakers and that's where you're gonna wanna cut. So for me, it's right around 3100 hertz here. So then we're gonna take that and then dip it just a little bit. So that's helping a bit. And usually there's there's two spots that I found, and this is like, again, after mixing hundreds of songs with tone like this, this is what I've discovered. It's usually one kind of lower in the 3K range and then higher in the five to 6K range. So let's do another one here. Yeah, that's not too bad, but listen to when I get further down to like five and a half K or 5,300. See how that's just jumping out in a really nasty way? So again, we're gonna dip that out a little bit. So again, let's, let's do both of these together. Now the key here is not to dip out too far. I mean, I'm not one of these guys who says like, just take 4K and just completely take it out of your mix. I think that kills a lot of the energy and the definition of like the pick attack on heavy guitars like this. So I only dip out maybe one to two dBs with a narrow band like this, um, but I think it makes a big difference. So now with the filters and both of these narrow cuts engaged, let's AB the guitars now. Check it out on the course. It's almost like we've taken kind of uh, a good tone, but it's just like that has all of these kind of out of control elements. And then we just come in and we just clean those up. We trim off the low end that's just woofy and rumbly that we don't need. It's not contributing to the tone, get rid of it. Same thing on the high end with the, the harsh fizz that's again, not contributing to the tone. Filter it out and then dip out some of the harshness, but leaving enough so that you still have some definition. And honestly, guys, I've done records out there, like fairly big releases where this kind of EQ is the only thing I've done. Like no boosts, no other big cuts or anything like that. This is the only EQ that's on the guitars at all. So if you're finding yourself struggling with guitar tone, like doing tons of crazy EQ boosts and cuts and all these different processing tricks to your heavy guitars. Maybe go back and start with this. Just make sure you get your filters right on the low and high end to just clean up those extreme frequencies that we don't need in a guitar tone. Cut out some of the harshness and the high mids. Again, usually for me, I found it, it's around 3K and then somewhere around five or 6K. Sweep it, find those harsh frequencies, dip it out a bit, but leave some definition. And it really makes a huge difference. We've got way more space for our bass to fill in the low end now. We've got more space in the high end for the air of the vocals, the cymbals, even lead guitars to cut through, things that we want brighter. Again, we're just making space in the mix, leaving the good parts of the tone intact, getting rid of everything that's not serving us in the mix. And again, I've done records where this is the only thing that's necessary. All right, I hope this helps you get a better metal guitar tone in your mixes. If you want more tips like this, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel, hit the button, turn on your alerts so you know when I post a new video. But the best place to get all of my best mixing and recording content for heavy music, rock, hardcore, and metal is to be on my email list. Uh, that's the only way you can get my premium high-end start to finish recording and mixing courses. So to get on my email list, I've got a free PDF guide for you to download. It's called the five surprising truths for producing heavy music that slams. And you can download it now for free at metalrecordingguide.com. And these are basically five kind of surprising, unconventional tips that I've gathered over a decade of producing major worldwide releases that I think if you implement now, it's going to actually move the needle, make a big difference in your recordings and mixes. So again, that's at metalrecordingguide.com. Grab it for free. 
You can check it out. You'll be on the email list. You'll get all the best stuff that way. And of course, leave a comment, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought of this video and we'll see you next time.